So for today's video, we're gonna start off on my floor because I have no room to unbox this thing. So my desk is all covered with monitors. My gaming desk has gaming stuff on it. And my workbench has my gaming computer on it. I'm not sure when that video is gonna be released because I have a lot going on right now and I'm just not really having a lot of time to make videos. Anyway, this is a Meraki MS42P, I think. And you can see USPS spared no expense, making sure my package stayed dry. So, not a lot of information yet. This switch I bought because I want to see if I can throw either OpenWRT or BIOS on it. So the license to use this thing is like 500 bucks or something. Actually, before I go into that, I managed to get this on eBay for like $97 or something, and the specs of this include 48 gigabit ports, and I think they're PoE actually, yeah, they're PoE, and there are four 10 gig SFP plus ports on it. A comparable switch from something like Unify would be pretty close to $1,000. And like I said, the reason these are so cheap is because the licensing basically makes up for the cost. I think the Meraki Cloud Management Access costs $100 for five years, and the switch management to use this thing in the already licensed software is another 500 or so. So here it is outside of the case, actually. I should probably pop it in front of the camera here. The aesthetic of this is just a sheet of aluminum, and it actually looks a lot like a Unify device. So like I talked about earlier, the plan with this is to try to get a third-party operating system on here. I know a lot of Meraki routers support OpenWRT, but I have not found any documentation on the switches aside from one post about, I think, an MS2208P or 228P or something and someone was, I think, able to get OpenWRT on it. I may be wrong on this as well, but I think Meraki is run Linux at their core, and if you remember about a year ago when I got that big server, I talked about Vios, and that's a switch operating system, and I might be able to get that on here because I think Vios is Linux as well. There is a little bit of cosmetic damage on here. You can see there's some scuffs on the top here. Luckily, the uh, front plate is absolutely pristine. There is also... If I slide it around here, there's a small nick there, and the case here is bent out. And if I kind of turn it over here, you can see that's bent out and damaged, and I'm sure that's due to UPS's very careful practices. But um, that should be able to just bend back. I have a, a vise that I could clamp that in, and or a clamp, or I forgot what they're called, but I can uh, just reshape that. As it is early February, it's very cold outside and I might be able to get some condensation to show up on this thing. It's kind of warmed up a bit, but I'm going to let this thing acclimate to room temperature. Maybe in the meantime, I'll fix that dent in the back, but once we do that, we can power it on and start messing with it because I think these have a 180 day grace period. I might actually need to buy the management software still, uh, which I don't have the money for currently. I should continue with if I'm able to get this working with Vios or OpenWRT. It's basically going to replace the GS748T in the server rack. I never made a video about that switch, but I probably should to kind of inform you guys on the story behind that, but that's beside the point. I'll probably make a separate video about getting a third-party operating system on this because Quite honestly, I do not have any time right now. I'm taking like 19 college credits. So it's been about an hour and I let the system warm up and I think it's time we plug it in. Actually, I forgot one thing. I am going to connect it to my UDM Pro. You saw that in probably the last video. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Would help if I plug the power supply in the right way. So 
So the fans sound okay. There is a bit of bearing wine on one of them and I might replace them if I end up keeping this. And that power LED is orange, not uh, green. It looks green on, in the video, but no link on the EMP yet. As is per usual with Cisco devices, it takes a really long time to boot up, it would seem. The power light did turn green. If I move the tripod, you can see there is a link light under, or I guess above, the port one number. And maybe that's just it. Maybe the fans don't spin down or anything. So I'm going to cut the video and see if I can get into some kind of management interface or something like that. I was going through the Apple uh, or the Meraki setup process and I need to do some kind of uh, push certification portal through Apple and it took me to this website. That's a, uh, that's a throwback. So I'm going to try not to show too much information here, but I have found the switch in the network and uh, you can see we have our ports there and power for everything. I guess it's a 380 watt PoE switch and we have our port statistics, VLANs, all kinds of stuff. That's uh, pretty cool. So yeah, it's kind of loud here. I'm gonna go somewhere else to finish this video, I think. So for now, I'm just gonna keep the Meraki in the server rack. It's pretty loud and I don't really want to have it in my room. And yeah, I just have it connected to the uh, GS748T uh, to that bottom one there. Other one goes to the uh, 3560, I think this one is. Yep. And this has the dead power supply. So, yeah, pretty neat. I might plug the uh, big server into that with my fiber, but um, we'll have to see about that. So the rack has changed a lot since the last clip. Uh, that was filmed in February. It's now like April 23rd or something. So that's great. But rack's changed a lot. And so has my kind of thoughts on the switch. I mentioned a bunch earlier that I didn't have a lot of time and that's further enforced right now. It's nearly the end of the semester. I'm kind of behind in a lot of stuff and I just don't really have time to work on the switch. If you saw the Arista video, which was the last video, I decided I was probably going to sell the Arista and I think that's the same situation with this. I haven't really done anything with this switch because like I said, the management is super expensive and I mentioned 180 day grace period. That's actually 30 days. They say it's 180 days, but it's 30 days. Thanks, Cisco. So I ended up um, getting this. Uh, we'll talk about this later, but I think the Arista and the Meraki are going to be sold. This one is pretty much for sure gonna be sold because I don't really need it for anything. I'm gonna do a factory reset and then uh, sell it for like 130 or something. So I could make a little bit of profit on this and I just don't need it because I have that. It's not really even worth putting effort into as a kind of experiment, I think. So we'll just have to see about that later. I guess I could talk about this in my network upgrades video where I also mentioned the Arista. So I think with that said, that's gonna be it for this video. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.